two sensors on this GTR, sir. With little to no room, but it's okay. We've got Dave's 2004 Titan over here. This is a one of one Vortex supercharged Titan. You're not gonna see another one of these. This was a prototype Vortex car. Uh, unfortunately, it never came out to production. Car, the truck actually sat for a number of years. I think it was about five years. The Vortex just couldn't get a handle on the tuning side of it. Thankfully, Dave was able to find us. This was about 13 years ago he found us and we were able to get this thing all dialed in for him so he could enjoy it and drive it. This thing is really, really cool. It has Vortex air to water set up, a really big custom heat exchanger tank that's in the bed in the back. We'll, uh, we'll go take a look at that thing. And of course the heat exchangers up front, really nice big lines that we have. These are dash 12s. So we can get a lot of water through the core and uh, it's got a V2 Vortex head unit on it. So this thing makes about seven, eight pounds of boost, makes about low 400 wheels. Last time we had it on the dyno, which was a long time ago, but uh, it's really, really cool. And uh, we'll go for a little drive. Back right here, we have the reservoir for the heat exchanger. This bad boy holds 11 gallons. So, you know, we can have a huge turnover and not heat soak the water and the coolant that's in there. So this is really, really cool little setup that it's got back here. So yeah, this truck, uh, this truck's really cool. Get that really cool wine from the V2 supercharger. Let you know that uh, there's something under the hood or a circulation valve on it. So it's not too, too noisy when it vents. So we're diagnosing the bit of noise this engine's making. And uh, what we've done is we've gone ahead and used our oil filter cutter tool. And so we've basically gone ahead and been able to pull this out. And you, know, you can see at the very top, you can see bearing material. So that's gonna be the source of that noise. So the course of action, this, this engine was rebuilt. I'm not sure how long ago. So we're draining the oil. We're gonna pull the oil pan out of this thing and think it's cylinder number one that has the issue. So we'll pull that bearing cap off and see how bad it is. See if the crank's uh, in good condition. See if it has oversized bearings, which I don't think it does based on what they told us about the engine itself. So yeah, it's unfortunate. This stuff does happen though. We'll see if we can save this thing. We'll pull the pan out and, and hopefully we can get away with just putting new bearings in this. What's going on here as far as, is it a machining error? What not, who knows, but um, yeah. Oil was, was really dirty and I'm not talking about just the little fragments that were in there, you know, the bearing material, but it was just really nasty. Going to pull the pan to get a better look at what is going on at the bottom end of this thing. We're gonna do that with the engine in play. So we're going to support the engine with this tool. It's pretty cool. And that way we can drop the cross member so we have the room we need to drop the oil pan.
take off the oil pan just so we could further see what the damage is. We're gonna check for bearing material since we did find that inside the oil filter. Um, we're gonna inspect all the rods, make sure everything is fine, make sure the crank is fine, and hopefully replace some rod bearings and then go from there. Alright guys, so we're pulling the pan on this VG that had all that bearing material in the oil filter. So just pull it down low, drain some of this out, and you can kind of see down in there in the bearing material. Alright guys, so we've we've got this thing torn apart. We we've pulled cylinder one and cylinder two rods. And uh, cylinder one was okay, not great, but cylinder two is definitely where we had the biggest issue. Uh, you can see how hot the rod journal area got on the crankshaft, it's black and blue. And then also on the main, you can see it's black and blue. So more than likely oil starvation on this motor. And it's gonna have to come apart entirely. There's no save in this thing. So it's gonna have to, more than likely the rods oblonged. Uh, it's gonna need a set of new rods and the crankshaft's gonna have to get uh, checked out, you know, and see if it can be, you know, cut down. Um, but yeah, unfortunately this one uh, is gonna have to come apart entirely. guys we are going to be installing our cam trigger kit on this vg30 this engine is going to be getting an aem series 2 ecu to control everything and with the series 2 you have to modify the factory crank angle sensor we're going to install our cam trigger kit instead to do that this is kind of an in-between what the crank angle sensor does and a full-on crank trigger and cam trigger setup this has its benefits I use them with the AEM and the Haltech ECUs. They work really, really well with that setup. So we're gonna go ahead and start. We've got our timing covers off on this engine and we're gonna go ahead and install it. We don't have to remove the belt. Literally, this is as much room as you need to get just to install the kit. So we're gonna go ahead and remove all the bolts. It'll sit in, the, in place. We're not gonna have those bolts off for too long. And we'll go ahead and get this rotor and you'll see it has here for the sensor to pick up so that this is reporting where the cam is. All right, so there you have it. Cam gear's on, it's not gonna go anywhere. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna reuse this plate that's in there. You just wanna make sure that you have enough area in which we do. If you have to, for some reason, you could grind on these edges, but this looks really good. So you'll note that you have the window opening. This is going to line up with the cam gears opening. So that's the dowel that goes to the actual exhaust cam shaft. So we're just gonna line those guys up. Gotta make sure you do that. All right, now that we have our rotor wheel installed, we can go ahead, put our existing bracket. You just need to remove the crank angle sensor from the bracket. We'll put that on and then we'll get our plate on, followed by the sensor. So our original bracket minus the sensor is gonna go back in. So this is the plate, this is for the VG, and we're gonna dress it up a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and use some Z-Spec hardware. We're gonna go with these washers and bolts, give it a little bit of contrast with the logo.
And the last piece is the sensor. So we're gonna thread the sensor in until it bottoms out against the rotor that we have installed already. And we are going to bottom out the sensor against our rotor ring. And once it's bottomed out, we're just going to turn it half to three quarters of a turn, and then we'll set our lock nut in place. That'll give us the appropriate amount of gap between the sensor and the rotor, and then we'll connect it. So we do provide the other side of the connector. It is the late style connector. This car already has that on there. So it'll be a simple plug and play. But for those of you with the early connector, we provide the other side of it so you can wire it up. So one other thing I do want to mention is, depending on the ECU you're going to be running, the signal wires need to be reversed. So, and depending on what ECU you're going to run is going to depend on how you have the green and the gray wire. So we're running the Series 2 ECU. We're going to leave the green wire on the outside. If you're running like a pro plug-in from Haltech, you would run the gray wire on the outside and you would run the green wire in its place. So we're just gonna plug this in.